running the country. Yeah. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, there's a vast, vast difference. And the difference being, of course, that uh, the, the government in this general debate thought they would scan around and they might try and find one opposition MP right. that might have said something that they don't agree with, and they can try and stretch that out for five minutes. Yes, yeah, so good on you. You managed to find one that you didn't agree with. My list that I'm going to try and get through in less than five minutes, because I've spent 30 seconds already, it could go Winston Peters, David Parker, Calvin Davis. Davis, Andrew Little, Eugenie Sage, Shane Jones, Stuart Nash, Phil Twyford, Chris Hipkins, Jenny Salisa, David Clark, Ian Lees Galloway, Michael Woods, list MPs officers. I'm going to try and show the incompetencies of all of those in the short four minutes that I've got left, because I don't have one to get through like they did for five minutes of trying to find it. I managed to get through such a long list. It is a rich smorgasbord of dysfunction that is happening on a daily basis from this coalition government. So first of all, we have Mr Winston Raymond Peters, who continuously told us that immigration must be slashed by 30,000. These people were dreadful, but now we're in government, we'll just zip it. Um, the OIO, of course, these foreigners that are buying all these houses and are doing such a dreadful job, we will do something about it, he said in opposition. Now in government, zip, in fact, we've changed it and it's a complete back down that we're seeing. Calvin Davis doesn't know how to house prisoners, doesn't know if they're double bunked, doesn't know what he's doing in a tourism portfolio, makes a fool of himself in select right. committee. Andrew Little is one that's really up my goat at the moment, so he can't actually talk to his uh, coalition partners, work out what he might do with stuff that's going through, and then has the audacity to stand in this House and say that a sexual assault against a corrections female officer, where her buttocks were grabbed for seconds, where she had time off work, she was followed and intimidated, is a low-level assault. Shame on him and shame on the women of Labour who sit back and let him make those statements, yet would be the first ones to leap on us if we were to say anything even close to it. In fact, go looking for our men to say something wrong. And this was a man who said that a sexual assault on a corrections officer was considered low level and did not consider, and think about how women these days feel about when they want to stand up and be spoken about the violence that's happening out there. So that's one that I think is absolutely shameful. Um, Eugenie Sage, so for many, I went out there and said no bottling of water and everything else, and we were supposed to believe that during the campaign. I was a minister who was involved with the OIO and made the decision not to go ahead with Lochinver. She did not ask the right questions. She did not have a stance on it that actually meant for something and could have made a different decision, but didn't actually have the courage to do so. And I think that that is shameful uh, when you stand there. Um, quite frankly, Shane Jones, and for what we saw today in this House, you may find it mildly entertaining, may find that embarrassing the Prime Minister, who has to stand there repeatedly and say comments, even though you were invited as a minister, we're speaking at a minister, as a minister at an event. You then, in this very house where you are a minister, make statements that are degrading one of the best companies that we've got in this country, quite frankly. And the Prime Minister herself has to say that you made them uh, in your personal capacity, end of story, and has to say that a good half a dozen times to the media uh, is actually, you may find it amusing, most of us find it actually embarrassing, but that's fine. Uh, Stuart Nash, I mean, uh, where to start on that? So the changes for policing, and I get that you come and make our own stamps as ministers and do what we want to do, but to actually go out there and campaign that we need more police stations, that New Zealanders need to live closer to them, and then drop that completely. And so this is not going noticed by the public at the moment, but trust me, we'll make sure it does, that actually that what they've done is taken away uh, the, that every New Zealander should live within 20 five kilometres 
of a staffed police station. And I think for the champion of the provinces, uh, as he likes to call himself, should get on that, because I think it is an absolute shame that they will not be opening the stations that we promised them and instead are closing them. Phil Twyford, well, let's be fair, Kiwi numbers uh, build numbers that just don't add up and aren't possible, and we're buying houses instead of building them. And then today we hear about a list Labour MP who then brags in the papers with Michael Woods um, saying that they are sharing offices and this is a way for ethnic order, people order. to get involved. Order. The time has expired. The Honourable Stuart Nash. <laughs> order. The Honourable Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Well, what an interesting, what an interesting contribution. Interesting. We heard, we heard.